Canada's north, renowned for vast landscapes, prolific wildlife, emerging urban centers, and home to some of our country's most resilient cultures and peoples. This region is also quickly becoming renowned as one of the world's most vulnerable locations to climate change. In northern Canada, climate change is already impacting our infrastructure, livelihoods, food security, transportation, safety, and more. All three of the territories are really on the front line of climate change. One of the greatest financial repercussions of climate change in the territories has been permafrost thaw. Permafrost can be considered as sort of the glue that holds the land together in the north. Essentially is the foundation of the ecosystem and many of our roads, uh, our community infrastructure. If climate changes, the distribution of permafrost, the temperatures of permafrost, and the physical characteristics of permafrost can also change. One of the consequences is the development of very large thaw slumps, which we've documented in the Peel Plateau, the Tuktoyaktuk coastlands, uh, as well up to Banks Island. In the Peel Plateau, we have disturbances now that are greater than 30 hectares in area, and some of those individual disturbances have removed downslope hundreds of thousands of cubic meters of sediment over the span of just a few years. This sediment loading can have impacts on water quality in rivers and streams, and even impede coastal travelers. We used to hear stories from the elders about they used to have these little uh, ref reefs that they could go inside as protection when they're traveling along the coastline. You you don't see those no more. They're all they're all closed up by uh, the gravel and sediment that built up over the years. As permafrost warms, the thickness of the active layer can increase, and as that active layer uh, thickens the top of permafrost degrades, and again, the ground potentially subsides proportional to how much ice there is in the ground. These subtle changes can modify drainage and hamper infrastructure, such as roads, as well as buildings and homes. There was a study just out of uh, the Northwest Territories, and they did an assessment for how much infrastructure is at risk from melting permafrost, and the number's up in the billions, right? Like it's, it's just massive numbers. Where we don't have permafrost, uh, we have a surfacing material that lasts for 14 and more years. Where we have degrading permafrost, the surfacing material lasts three to four years and sometimes less. So there's very frequent resurfacing where we have degrading permafrost, which is one of the factors that increases our maintenance costs. Permafrost thaw hasn't been the only costly impact of climate change. All three territories are experiencing an increase in the frequency of landscape hazard events, which is projected to increase. If you're in the Yukon or the Northwest Territories, well, forest fire is a hazard if you're below the tree line. What does climate change have to do with forest fire? Well, we're changing our precipitation patterns. Overall, precipitation looks like it's going up, but it's really increasing in variability as well. So we get sometimes when we have uh, an extended dry period, and that is also accompanied with more thunder and lightning than we've ever had and that's also accompanied with higher winds than we've ever had and that's also accompanied with beetle infestations suddenly they get an extra life cycle and so they they can expand and all those things combined lead to a bigger fire hazard with bigger rain events than we've ever had a hazard of a different nature has become the greatest challenge in the yukon in recent years in June of 2012, there was a major weather system that moved through the southern part of the Yukon Territory, and this produced roughly 70 millimeters of rain in a single precipitation system. That combined with the snowpack that was stopped in the mountains uh, caused flash flooding to occur. Several roads across southern Yukon were washed out, and one community was flooded. Transport trucks carrying groceries for Yukon stores were stuck behind the washouts. In the 37 years I've lived in Whitehorse, I've never seen the um, aisles in the grocery store as empty as that year. It made us very aware of how um, remote we really are and how vulnerable and how we depend on uh, trucks coming up, coming up the Alaska Highway and that there's only one way, one road in from the south to bring us our groceries. Climate change impacts on food security extend beyond the grocery store, especially in the Arctic. 
I grew up down, well, going camping down the bay for the summer. It's called Pizit. It's where we would go berry picking and fishing for the summer. And it's a beautiful area, but lately we've been noticing less berries. And normally there was like an abundance of berries. My dad being a hunter, I'm hearing more like, uh, the ice is thin here. It's like, he can't determine if it's going to be um, a bad patch of ice as to where he knew every trail where it was bad. Now with um, this climate change, it's unpredictable. <laughs> In addition to unpredictable harvest conditions, climate change is also taking its toll on the abundance of critical northern food sources, such as caribou. We get ice formed on top of the snow crest. And that makes it very difficult for the caribou and the muskox and the wildlife to forage. We, we went there one season, we found like five caribou uh, had um, uh, perished due to starvation. We're seeing more of this each year. Climate change represents more than just a loss of harvesting opportunities for northerners. Time spent on the land forms a cornerstone for teaching youth deep social and cultural values and life skills, such as respect and patience. Just learning how to make dry fish, that is, that's pretty fun. I've seen it done all growing up, uh, living at Shingle Point for the summers, watching my aunts and grandmother stuff and do that. And just going off of memory and just making the same cuts they did. It's kind of slowly dying off, the traditional lifestyle. And, but then there, there's a few of us who are still we're trying, and it's tough to do, but it's, it's good, it's good eating. Hopefully for like my kid, and future kids, I guess, would, uh, I'll go on teaching them how. Climate change is having profound impacts on northerners. Permafrost thaw, an increase in landscape hazard events, and dramatic changes to subsistent lifestyles. These are just a few examples that reinforce why the Arctic has been coined the first and the worst when it comes to climate change impacts. In the wake of challenges presented to Northerners by climate change, territorial governments and other stakeholders continue to seek creative and adaptive strategies to address the impacts on the land, infrastructure, and Northern culture. <laughs>